So good afternoon, everybody. I am Kobe Busso. I am working as an assistant professor of spatial planning and mobility at VUB Brussels University in Belgium. And I will talk about an applied research project I did with a number of colleagues. Uh, you see them here from uh, Ghent University and also from TU Delft. It was an, an applied research project that was commissioned by the Flemish government. So this is the northern part of Belgium. Uh, and it's called Planning for Agglomeration Economies in a Polycentric Region, Envisioning an Efficient Metropolitan Core Area in Belgium. Um, so we started from uh, the idea that the regional settlement patterns in Western Europe and particularly in the north of, of Belgium, that they are characterized by a large number of small, small sized cities and towns. So there are no real big cities um, that they still perform, perform well in an economic sense. And that at the same time, uh, level, the levels of quality of life are rather high in this region. And we wonder to what extent we could consider this region a polycentric metropolitan area. So you see here how it looks like uh, in the middle of the night from outer space. Um, a number of larger cities are, are part of the, of the study area, notably Brussels, Antwerp and Ghent, but also a number of regional cities and smaller towns and a lot of urban sprawl, uh, of course. Um, with respect to economic performance, um, we, uh, yeah, we noticed that a from a traditional urban economics perspective that um, yeah, cities that are bigger seem to perform better from an, in an economic sense. And then the question is to what extent can polycentric uh, networks, polycentric urban regions um, approximate the same level of economic performance? Uh, under which conditions could such a system be competitive with something that would be like a single large city composed of the same number or uh, a similar, um, similar number of inhabitants and jobs. Um, from a quality of life perspective and also sustainability perspective, we also note that bigger cities perform less well than uh, let's say smaller cities. And this is something that is stressed usually not very much by urban economists, but rather by urban planners who uh, are inclined to stress the human scale um, and uh, seem this, uh, well, uh, appreciate, this as an, appreciate this as an important aspect of uh, smaller sized cities and towns. Um, so from, yeah, from these ideas, uh, we developed a, a number of research questions. And the first research question was, the question of whether it is possible to combine livability uh, benefits that are typically associated with smaller, small sized cities and towns with economic benefits that are typically associated with large cities in what we could call a polycentric urban system. Second question about what, what critical mass are we talking? How many people and jobs do we actually need if we want to, um, yeah, to achieve the econom economies of scale that are typical, typical for a well-performing large urban conurbation? And then the third, the most applied part of the research question or the set of research questions is how should growth of this polycentric case to the area, so the north of Belgium, how should it be directed aiming at strengthening both economic performance, but also taking into, into account uh, sustainability and livability constraints? Um, so we uh, started from a literature review and then we did spatial analysis where we try to map uh, the agglomeration potential. You will see in a couple of, of slides from now what I mean with that. And then the third part of the research was organizing a number of stakeholder uh, workshops in which we wanted to envision a number of uh, plausible scenarios for sustainable metropolitan, placentric metropolitan growth. So the, from the literature review, we learned that, um, well, indeed, uh, polycentric metropolitan areas, they vary in size and level of interaction. So there is like a wide range of, of, of them, a wide variety of them. But what is what is kind of a common characteristic that is that um, the higher the level of internal connectivity, the better they perform in an economic sense. So internal connectivity is really determining for economic performance. Then from the optimum city size literature, we derived um, or we derived that actually cities that yeah um, are like nodes or, or um, focal points and global networks that they yeah they are characterized by like a minimum uh, a minimum threshold of yeah between 1.5 and 2 million inhabitants 
inhabitants, although the recent, the more recent literature is that we reviewed, the more upwards this uh, threshold was uh, uh, adjusted. And then we also looked into the literature on transit-oriented development because we thought that transit-oriented development could be the clue to, um, yeah, to organize the polycentric system in a, in a more sustainable uh, manner, as opposed to a road transport uh, development. Um, then we went to the spatial anal analysis where we tried to visualize the agglomeration potential. Um, we, did, we did this by assuming these un uh, minimum population thresholds. Um, we took the existing railway network as a basis, as a, as a backbone for future uh, urban or polycentric urban development, where we assumed that transit service uh, would um, would be offered at high fre frequency, and we also selected a number of uh, actually the most important cities as they exist now as the anchor points for this network. And then we developed the, the accessibility accessibility maps by um, yeah mapping who would be part given the, the current residential structure who would be part of such an, an urban a polycentric urban agglomeration of for example 1.5 but then also 2 2.5 etc uh, a number of million uh, inhabitants and we did this calculation for flanders and brussels only which is a bit at odds with of course with the perspective of, of the current um, yeah conference i think because uh, this was a study commissioned by the flemish government and it was actually uh, well it was not part of the assignment to um, look at cross-border border interaction, but of course, uh, yeah, this idea could be uh, elaborated uh, from a cross-border cross border perspective as well. Um, so this is how the spatial analysis maps looked like. Um, so in the legends, the uh, numbers you see there, they uh, point to the, well, um, the million of an numbers of million of inhabitants that would be part of the system. Um, you see that we that the the analysis shows actually uh, the railway corridors in the northern part um, of Belgium centered on the city of Brussels, city of Antwerp, and then also the city of Ghent and uh, Leuven. And then you see, yeah, everything that is red comprises a current population of up to 2 million people. Um, but the further you move away from the railway stations, um, the larger the population included in this uh, conurbation, um, um, yeah, the, the larger the population, which is included in the conurbation that is modeled. Um, then we took uh, these maps into a visioning workshop where we tried to elaborate a number of uh, metropolitan growth scenarios. We looked for densification opportunities with regards to first additional housing opportunities and second additional employment opportunities, where we took into account the proximity to the existing urban agglomerations and second, um, yeah, the, the condition that these new developments needed to be included in, the, in these uh, threshold values and also the uh, with, within actually within short distance of the railway stations that were um, included in the in the model um, in order to yeah develop uh, develop um, in line with a transit oriented development strategy and so these are the maps that uh, well the maps the structure uh, structure maps that were derived from the workshop so here you see like the conurbations that need to be strengthened but also like a, a couple of you could call them even uh, new towns so existing settlements that need would need to be strengthened uh, uh, in order to uh, receive the additional population growth uh, similar for additional growth of employment and industrial activities um, and then uh, the, the next question was uh, which transit connections need to be um, uh, strengthened in order to support this uh, development model. Um, so um, as conclusions, I can say that, um, that yeah, first we found that livability requirements that they put limits to urban expansion and to growth of road transport, urban expansion in the sense of you know, urban sprawl, urban spread, uh, but also uh, road transport um, from an environmental and a livability perspective, of course, that a road based uh, accessibility potential is no longer a realistic way for modeling daily urban systems, that we uh, rather need to look uh, into railway systems. Um, that strength, the strengthening of existing urban agglomerations, in our case, the Brussels Antwerp axis and the surrounding areas, um, and uh, selective transit oriented development that it may be used to valor valorize uh, existing agglomeration economies. 
And then there are a few, yeah, Promimori, I uh, mentioned that there is also uh, still room for like generic employment that is attached to existing settlements, uh, to the urban sprawl um, and existing villages. Uh, and then the second um, caveat is that there are, in Belgium, there seem to be like uh, a number of important in institutional barriers that are attached to the regional governments that do not have uh, exactly the same vision on uh, urban and regional development. Um, and this is where I would like to, um, to close. So here's the reference to the paper that was published based on this research in the European Journal of Spatial Development. So thank you for your attention.